Hi there. Here are four main reasons why every single player should do extreme trials in Final Fantasy XIV. Number one, barrier to entry is a lot lower. Now with Savage tier content and rating in Final Fantasy XIV, you're talking like cream of the crop and some pretty mild to medium dedication to learning everything you can. Extremes don't follow this model as strictly. The reason for this is we can quickly outpace the item levels needed for the extreme fights during the current expansion. If you are a casual player who's already gotten any of the 590 gear, 580 gear, and maybe even 570 gear, then you're probably ready to do the fight. Reading just a few guides and getting somewhat familiar with the content is also a really good thing to do, but there are lots of learning parties that you can find in the party finder. If you want a little more slack, then you can also material meld any pieces of those gear that you have for even a bigger safety net. Extreme trials are hardest when they first dropped, but then get easier and easier as more gear with higher levels come out. Unlike Savage, where you have to have almost everything perfected between melds, highest gear, optimized stats, and perfected rotation. Now, this is usually where I ask you if you can limit break through that like button since the YouTube algorithm is like the ultimate boss from hell. Number two, introduction to end game mechanics. Now, many end game mechanics are just far different in my opinion than regular mechanics. What Extreme Trials introduce you to are the mechanics that you will start seeing in Savage content, which is Cardinal and Intercardinal referring to your placement on the map, full use of the arena. Many of these mechanics during the fight, you have to be very aware of all of your surroundings compared to most casual content, where as long as you don't get hit, you're fine. They also introduce the need for watching the boss to determine the next mechanic as most casual content has orange indicators or telegraphs. In extreme trials, these start to go away. And you must identify within a split second in order to move out of the way. Or be very familiar with the fight or have someone just doing call outs and helping you out. It is very much like a dance when it comes to endgame content and there is something comforting about that. But learning it can be a bish. Number 3. Super Special Rewards Gear and Mount Extreme Trials do have special rewards, but my favorite of them are being the special mounts that are associated with the trials. Such as the current Extreme Trial, to which I will not spoil for you guys, but I can show you a clip of the mount that you can get, which I have not yet, but working on it currently. Now you might say, why does this matter? Well, did you know that the Extreme Trial mounts old and new, and some others have their own soundtrack associated with them when writing them? Let's take the ARR or A Rum Reborn Extreme Trial mounts for example. My favorite being the Ramu one as the soundtrack is so sick. Okay, shh, sh sh listen. So sick, right? And by this time, you're pretty much tired of the chocobo music that you get from riding the chocobo mount around or just the regular in-game music. So it's a really nice break from having to listen to the same soundtrack over and over again. Each expansion has its own style of mount. So for ARR, they were horses, Heavensward, they were birds, Stormblood, their dogs, and Shadowbringers were gwibs or mini dragons. The even cooler thing is when you collect all of them from a specific expansion, there's usually like an ultimate mount that you can get at the very end as well. A really good reason to go back and do some mount farming for the old trials unsynced and trying out the current ones. Number four, the beginnings of accomplishment. Now for me, I'm happy at this stage when finishing an extreme, you get a taste of what it's like to experience a very difficult fight and really beating it. This is a very particular feeling that is really only related to endgame rating. Something about knowing your job, knowing the fight, and killing the boss all while working with your 7 other teammates really brings on the feeling of elation for the game. That being said, some people are totally fine without it as it can be a little stressful, but extremes are far less stressful than Savage Tier, so this might be a good place to start to see if you like this kind of content. Now, if you want to know if you should do Savage content, don't. If you want to know the five reasons why you shouldn't, then you can find that video in the description box or at the end of this video. 
Now, if you got any value out of this video, hit that sub button to get notified of all my Endwalker guides and tutorials. If you want to join a fun educational discord, you can find that below as long with all my other medias. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy Endwalker content, then you can click here.